a large earthquake to hit California in the near future? Well, 99.7% chance of a magnitude 6.7 in 20 years has been given. Experts expect a big California quake by 2038. 2037, as this was written a year ago, California faces an almost certain risk of being rocked by a strong earthquake. Scientists said it was the first statewide trembler forecast given. New calculations say that there is a 99.7% chance of a magnitude 6.7 earthquake or even larger than that and that it will strike definitely within the next 30 years. And this is what has been uh, given uh, as a warning to the Canadians as well. The Canadians gave it a couple of years back. The odds of such an event are higher in Southern California than Northern California, 97% versus 93%. And this time, this last time, the jolt this size rattled California was in 1994 with the North Ridge disaster. And uh, that killed 72, injuring more than 9,000, causing 25 billion in damage. Ned Field, who is a seismologist with the US Geological Survey said, it basically guarantees it's going to happen because California, as we know, is one of the most seismically active regions in the world. It has more than 300 faults, and they're crisscrossing the whole state, which sits on top of Earth's major tectonic plates, the Pacific and the North American plates, the Pacific squeezing underneath the North American, and it has a very, very big stress over there. About 10,000 quakes each year rattle Southern California alone, and most of them are too small to be felt. The analysis in the first comprehensive study made by U.S. Geological Survey, Southern California Earthquake Center, and California Geological Survey calculated these earthquake probabilities for the whole state. They used newly available data. Previous quake probabilities focused on sections, regions of the area, using various methods that made it difficult to compare. For example, 2003 report found the San Francisco Bay Area faced a 62% chance of being struck by a magnitude 6.7 quake by the year 2032. 6.7 uh, magnitude, 62%. This new study increased the likelihood slightly to 63 by the year 2037. For the Los Angeles area, the probability is higher at a 67%. And there is no past comparison for the Los Angeles area. The scientists still cannot predict why, where the state uh, 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 quake will occur or when, but they say the analysis should be a wake-up call for residents to prepare for this as a natural disaster by an earthquake. The likelihood of a strong earthquake in their first step is allowing scientists to draw up hazard maps that show the severity of ground shaking in the area. So this information could also help with updating building codes and emergency plans and setting earthquake insurance rates. The big earthquake, the big one, could happen tomorrow or can happen in, in 10 years from now. Uh, the SCEC director, Tom Jordan, uh, said at the uh, University of uh, Southern Cal uh, California, he was part of the research, all of the faults in the state, the southern San Andreas Fault, running from Parkfield to Salton Sea, appears most primed to break, the scientists found. And we know that the Salton Sea has been having a very big uptake in quake swarms lately, since the middle of February, uh, when we saw the Pisgah Crater uh, uh, quake swarms as well. Now, there's a 59% chance in the next three decades that a North Ridge sized quake will occur on the fault compared to a 21% for the northern section. The northern San Andreas Fault produced the 1906 San Francisco earthquake and uh, a recent disaster in geological time compared to the southernmost segment, which has not popped in more than 300 years. So that's why they're saying it could happen in the south, because it has not given an earthquake in over 300 years. Scientists are also concerned about the Hayward Fault and the San Jacinto Fault, which have a 31% of producing 
a Northridge-sized trembler within 30 years. The Hayward Fault runs through densely populated cities in the San Francisco Bay Area. The San Jacinto Fault bisects fast-growing cities of San Bernardino. And we know that San Bernardino, beside those, behind those mountains, is a volcanic field. So that whole thing is also have, has also seen earthquake swarms, as we see from my past videos. And they're going on today. As we see in, uh, for example, in Berkeley Seismo, uh, besides the very strange earthquake that we had in uh, Florida today, very shallow uh, uh, 3.1 magnitude, we've been having swarms all over in California. Uh, we even had a big one in Colorado of uh, 3.2. And the Salton Sea has been uh, oh, shaking with uh, today's quakes as well. Uh, had a 3 yesterday, a 3 magnitude yesterday. Uh, this, <laughs> what can I say? It's hopping. And Los Angeles as well. Hopping with earthquakes, even today. Okay, I'll leave a link below for the size of Berkeley. You can see for yourself because it updates every few minutes. But um, that's the prediction. Now, how do we get at those bigger earthquakes? Uh, there are studies that provide a better sense of the part of the hazard of the uniform California earthquake rupture forecast. Uh, and the global earthquake activity rate model. Now we have the, the San, San Andreas and the, per, the parallel fault of the um, Hayward Fault. The user, for user F3 estimates and likelihoods of large, moderate, and small earthquakes on all known major faults in California combined with the shaking you expect in those earthquakes is exactly what the U.S. National Seismic Hazard Maps for California use in their building codes and insurance policies, so this is no joke. Uh, thanks to over three decades of research, as well as using a rate of strain buildup in the earthquake area, it also incorporates data like, uh, like evidence for prehistoric earthquakes that took place in this last known and the last known rupture of faults the geologic data and how fast faults are slipping, and the interconnected nature of the fault system, including the possibility that a big earthquake might not rupture just one fault, but several faults at the same time. So, um, also we have the factor of the squeezing. The, the squeeze model predicts similar probabilities of earthquakes up to about a magnitude 6.5. The USERF three probabilities are higher, likely because it incorporates all those faults that pass through Los Angeles from outside and the ways they link up in the earthquakes. The uh, Global Earthquake Activity Rate Model, GEAR model, is a worldwide earthquake forecast and is used anywhere on Earth, and it estimates tectonic strains and the Global Earthquake Catalog. And, uh, the, we get uh, from gear, we get a chance of experiencing a magnitude 6.5 to 6.75 earthquake in our lifetimes that is larger than the squeeze model prediction of a 6.1. While some of the, this reflects differences between the two approaches, we have to remember that the entire fault system in Southern California contributes to the seismic hazards in, in LA and also that the mighty San Andreas, which lurks just on the other side of the San Gabriel Mountains, okay, it's, uh, it's, we see again, as we see the earthquake swarms from the seismo Berkeley, uh, basically they plot a lot. They're, the USGS does not report as much as it records, unfortunately. Uh, that's why I like using seismo Berkeley. And you'll see that the whole area of uh, the San Andreas and inside, parallel to it, uh, along be, before the west of the San Bernardino, which is the Hayward Fault, is rocking. Also to the north, you have a tremendous amount of activity um, towards San Francisco. But the thing is here, uh, to the south, that has not seen an earthquake in 300 years, 
I mean, we're talking about a major earthquake, of course. So I'll leave links below for you for this. Thank you. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.